Hey guys, this is Amanda from Perfectionism Prints, and today I want to go over my new habit tracker. So you can see here that it's pictured uh, mostly blank. I did write the month in over here. And this habit tracker allows you to um, track recurring tasks that occur weekly, monthly, uh, and daily. There's also a spot on here to track your spending, if you have a couple of categories of your budget that you really want to you know, keep a close eye on, or if you don't normally do an actual budget, but there are a couple um, things that you wanna track, you can track that in the spending. And then it has a habit score area here, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this out, do like a mock month, and show you how it would work. So I'll be right back with that filled in. All right guys, I'm back. And I just filled out a pretend month here just to show you how it works. And so you can see here that uh, under the weekly tasks, I put down sort mail, lift weights, cook a new meal, and weekly review. So these are each things I wanna get done every week. Up here are uh, week numbers, so uh, or you could um, write one, two, three, four, five, or whatever you wanted to do. Um, each task gets a check mark if it was done that week, and obviously it gets left blank if it doesn't get done that week. And then there's a spot to total up how many of the tasks you did each week, and then, or I'm sorry, this would be how many tasks you did each week, and then this total over here is over the month for each specific task, how many times did you do it? So like for week 40 here, um, I did all four tasks and for um, sorting mail, I did it five out of five weeks this month. So that's kind of the idea. And then if you want, you can keep like a grand total of everything for the month over here in this corner. One thing I find is that with a lot of habit trackers, there's a way to track, but there's not necessarily um, a good way to analyze the data or even total the data. And so that's something that I do try to make sure that I'm doing because it's not always useful to track the information if I'm not analyzing it or, or using it in some way. I mean, I guess it's useful in the sense that, you know, it's motivating to be able to check something off even if you don't analyze the data after, but when you analyze it, I think it adds a whole new level of um, of usefulness. So that's why I try to um, make room for these totals on here and the habit score, which I'll get to at the end. So similarly to the weekly tasks, the monthly tasks are things that um, I wanna make sure I'm getting done each month, like um, get new um, contact lenses, change my air filter, and do a monthly budget. And again, there's a spot to mark off if you've done those things or not. Um, there's also like a small notes column here if you have any notes you wanna add about the, the monthly tasks. Now for spending, so let's say I wanted to track how much I'm spending on planner supplies because I have zero self-control. Expected budget, $100 a month. Let's say I actually spent $250 that month on planner supplies because, you know, I had to make an extra cloth and paper order. So then I would keep track of that. Um, and then I'm saving this habit score to do at the end here. And there is a total column here. Uh, I didn't bother to, to total up these numbers, but you know you can keep track of, you know, let's say you're tracking all of your discretionary spending for the month or something, you could total that up. Now I'm going to um, take this insert out. Uh, and this is just my, my next GTD insert under here. Um, by the way, I always cut slits so that I can easily take them out of my planner. Uh, and I find that is a way to save your rings from, um, you know, getting gaps and everything because you're just not using them as much. And it's also just a lot easier to take something out like that than to have to open and close your rings every time you want to take something out. So um, you can add the days of the week in at the top here for whatever month and then there's um, numbers here for each date um, up to 31 so this will work for any month and uh, I just put two 
daily tasks or habits in here, you know, just to make this easier <laughs> to go through. Um, so I want to read the Bible every day and I want to floss every day. Then at the beginning of the month, I also determine um, a goal. Let's see if I can get this closer. I also determine like a goal of how many times I want to do that thing each month. So like the Bible, I want to read the Bible every day. So I said my goal was 31 for 31 days. Now flossing, you know, I'm not as disciplined with that and I would be thrilled if I just did it, you know, the majority of the time. So I said my goal for flossing was 20 days this month. And then when you're done filling everything in for the month, you can fill in like the amount of days that you actually completed the, um, the habit or the task. Now down here in this miscellaneous tracking section, this can be used to track things that aren't necessarily habits. So it's not necessarily something that you need to check off that you did every day, but maybe it's something that you want to remember when you last did it. So like this on this first row here, I have change sheets. Um, so let's, you know, let's say my goal is to change the sheets once a week, but you know, I'm not going to put it on my, on my, um, weekly tasks list here because it's really not that big of a deal if I don't do it. I mainly just want to keep track of, of when I last did it. So, you know, I can easily track that on here. Um, another thing you can use this for is like a, a mood tracker or a sleep tracker. So I put, you know, three moods on here, happy, meh, and sad. And each day I put a dot on, you know, whatever my mood was closest to that day. And then at the end of the month, um, you know, you have, you can connect your dots and have a nice graph here. And I think lining this up with the habit tracker can be really useful because you can see, you know, maybe does your, your mood, um, or if you want to track anxiety level here, or energy level or something like that, does that correspond with how much you're getting done, how productive you are, how many habits you're doing, or maybe it's the other way around. The more habits you do, the better your, your mood is. You know, and like on here, like on um, the 28th of the month here, I didn't read the Bible or floss. And if you look down here, my mood happened to be sad that day. So, you know, it's just um, to do something like that is an easier way to, to analyze trends. All right, now let's talk about the habit score. You could add a lot of things into this habit score. I usually just use it to calculate the score on my daily tasks, which is one of the reasons I totaled them up. So first what I do is I total once at the end of the month, once I total up each habit, then I make a total of how many times I did um, every habit that month. Okay, so I um, completed uh, 44 total habits this month and my goal was to complete 51. All right, so now I take those numbers, the 44 and the 51, this is probably completely out of focus, there we go, and I move them over to the habit score. So the actual is the actual number of habit, habits that I completed, um, which was 44, and the goal was 51. So when you divide 44 by 51, um, you get 0 0.86, you multiply that by 100, and you get 86%. All right, so what does 86% mean? Well, it depends on, you know, your goals. Um, you know, one thing you could do at the beginning of the month is you could set a goal that, hey, I want to complete you know, I want a habit score of 80% or 90%. I encourage you not to say 100% because that just puts a lot of pressure on yourself. Um, or one way I find it really useful is to do this every month and then to compare the percentages each month. And um, again, that's an easy way to kind of um, correlate your productivity with your mood or what's going on in your life at the time. Uh, for example, I had a baby in at the end of March. So my habit score for April was really low. Actually, to be perfectly honest, I probably didn't even do a habit score for April. <laughs> I think I did. I think it was really low though. It's just one way to, to help make the habit tracker useful.
And so anyway, I just wanted to go over all of that and show you how I use the habit tracker and the habit score. And of course, there's a million other ways that you could use it and other things that you could do. I would love to hear your um, thoughts and ideas about that and how you use habit trackers. And this is listed in the shop as of today, which is September 30th. And it's listed in A5, half letter, personal wide, happy planner, mini, um, personal A6 and pocket. And I think that's all I have to say. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.